it happened when Hurricane Irene came. Uh, some things blew off, and they called me because uh, I'm the. I had worked on it before, about 12 years ago. I did a little bit of roof work up there, and uh, I know the building uh, e extremely well. I, I spent a lot of time up there. Uh, so they called uh, and said, Jeff, we need to take him down. Um, it's, a, it's a safety issue. So I was, uh, I was pretty taken back. Uh, I never thought I would get that call. I knew it was in tough shape, uh, but when they said it had to come down, uh, I was excited because it is it was a total adrenaline rush to do this um, and uh, I had it on the ground myself in about 12 hours of labor and, uh, and uh, it was uh, it was pretty exhilarating it was, uh, it was fun. Jeff Samuelson. A resident of the small Massachusetts town of North Brookfield, Jeff has been in the construction business for over 20 years. At only 43 years of age, Jeff has seen great business during his time. Everything from helping local residents build their houses to restoring the clock at the first congregational church in town. When I was a kid, I grew up in an old house and uh, my father is uh, very mechanically inclined and he was always working on something and I would follow him around just like a little puppy um, and uh, whatever he was doing I always helped whatever pick it up pick up the mess or, or whatever get him another board or whatever he needed and uh, he always said that oh I should be doing this for a living because um, he enjoyed working on his house and uh, he, so I, I had looks like I followed him around and then in 1984, uh, I'm not uh, an academic, I'm just not wired for that. I started trade school at Cantasqua. It's, it's really not hard at all to do something if you have an interest in it. Uh, and I, I've done a, I, a lot of different projects. Any, uh, it start, you know, from remodeling to building to vinyl siding to roofing. Um, I did uh, Gene Kai's house on uh, King Street probably about 13 years ago now and I got a lot of recognition off of that because it was a, a very unique job and uh, I like showing my best work off uh, on stage. But it wasn't until late 2011 that he was faced with his biggest challenge yet, a project that would become the cornerstone of his career. This morning, Hurricane Irene is quickly strengthening as it cuts a path of destruction toward the Bahamas. In just a few days, it is likely to head up the East Coast, and it could be the most powerful storm to reach New England in 20 years. The storm is very strong. It's on the verge of becoming a Category 3 hurricane, which would make it a major hurricane. When the tropical storm Irene made landfall in August of 2011, trees and telephone lines were down, houses were destroyed, and flooding was rampant. Yet. By the time the storm made its way from Florida up to the Massachusetts Bay, the only forces New Englanders were seeing were high winds and heavy rain. Although the storm did little damage to the residences of North Brookfield, the storm proved to be strong enough to severely damage this building, the North Brookfield Townhouse. Now before we go any further, let's backtrack a bit. The North Brookfield Townhouse, or the Town Hall as some call it, is a North Brookfield landmark. Constructed in 1864, the original structure cost roughly $17,500 to $20,000 and was designed by Elbridge Boyden. During its early years, the townhouse held markets, stores, and offices, as well as the town lockup. Over the years, the building has been used for various meetings, musical performances, sports games, and other town activities. 
as well as plays and theater acts, some of the most attended being those of the notorious George M. Cohan during the early 20th century. Unfortunately, the townhouse was closed in late 2002 due to structural issues. For years, the fate of the townhouse was uncertain, and at one point a survey was held as to whether the entire building should be destroyed altogether. Yet the house had been added to the National Registry of Historic Places in 2001, only a year before it was permanently closed. This, combined with the sentimentality of the townsfolk, rendered the decision to keep the townhouse and continue efforts towards repairing it. As far as the design flaws go, uh, there really weren't there weren't any design flaws. It was the materials that they had available at that time uh, to use. And they heated it with coal because that was what was available. Um, the building is extremely ornate. There's a lot of flat spots, uh, and you can't use wood in a flat situation because it will hold water. So a lot of it's covered with uh, sheet metal. And again, that's what they had at the time, so that's what they used. Uh, and a lot of it, uh, the, the sheet metal was painted. Uh, it did have a slate roof originally, uh, and that um, is, is gone now. Enter Irene, a large and destructive tropical cyclone formed in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. With winds up to 120 miles per hour, the storm proved to be the seventh costliest storm in United States history, racking up nearly $16.6 .6 billion in damages along the East Coast. Damages that included those seen in North Brookfield. The tower of the over 140-year-old townhouse was damaged. Damaged beyond repair. It was deemed a safety hazard to the residents of North Brookfield. The only choice was to take the tower down. For years, it's been hard to pass through North Brookfield and not notice the bell tower that sits atop their old town hall and high above the town green. But that was until today. When it came time to cut it, uh, I guess about 10,000 pounds, it ended up weighing seven. When I started cutting, I, I started the saw, and it was one of those things where you just kind of, I didn't close my eyes, but you, to some degree, you close your eyes, and uh, my thoughts were, if I'm going to die today, I'm going to find out right now. On September 1st, 2011, the unthinkable occurred. The bell tower of the North Brookfield townhouse that had served the town since the mid-19th century was removed via chainsaw from the top of the building. The bell tolled three times before it was cut down, then twelve more times before it was lifted off the roof. Hundreds gathered in the streets below. When I first saw it, because uh, I was right there, when it was that first inch of separation, it's the, the second that lasts an hour. You can't believe it. It was absolutely incredible, and it was kind of eerie because it was so, it was just about ready to thunderstorm, and it did not, thank, thank God. Um, but it was, uh, was kind of ghostly, because uh, it is uh, such a significant building, and there's so many men poured their heart and soul into that. Um, but it was, it was definitely ghostly to see how dark the sky had become, and uh, it was a lot of fun. The press responded to the historic moment with several newspaper articles, printed via various newspapers in Worcester County. Many did not know what would become of the townhouse now that it was extensively damaged. Town selectman Mary Walter was quoted as saying that the fate of the townhouse now lies in the hands of the residents of North Brookfield. Town historian Eugene Kai was reported saying how the townhouse's tower makes North Brookfield what it is, and that the townhouse just won't be the same without it. The insurance company behind the townhouse offered to repair the tower, but the town would have to come up with not only the money to pay the insurance company, but also to pay for the architect and blueprints that would design a stronger tower. Jeff worked with architect Dan Benoit to produce blueprints for the new tower. The process took about 10 months and cost roughly $18,000. Meanwhile, the top of the tower idly sat on the side of the road on Main Street.
And next we have Jeff Samuelson regarding the townhouse tower project. Tonight I'm here to uh, discuss the uh, recent unfolding events uh, involved with the town hall. Um, some of you people on uh, watching probably don't know me. Uh, my name is Jeff Samuelson and I live on 11 Chase Road and um, the local hillbilly carpenter. Jump forward. It is December 2012, and Jeff is about to propose to the town selectmen that he begin work on the project to restore the bell tower of the townhouse. The project would entail gutting and tearing out the floor of the tower's base, and replacing it with modern beams and supports to stabilize the new tower when it is placed back on. Meanwhile, he would also build a template of the old tower, in order to construct an identical replica of the original. He predicts that the project will take roughly one year to complete. And the verdict? I'll entertain a motion to uh, in, enforce the, the project as designed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Once, uh, once I got the green light from the insurance company and the building inspector and uh, the prints were all set ready to go, I, I finished a couple of uh, jobs that I had going, had going at the time and then uh, I started immediately. And it was cold because there's no heat in there, but you get into a zone where it, it, you don't even know that it's cold because you're, I'm totally hyper-focused on what I'm doing and uh, you can pretty much tune it out. Uh, so I, I uh, was happy to do it, plus, uh, you know, there's no wind inside there in the wintertime. However, although the bell tower was removed in 2011 and the project proposed in 2012, the restoration process did not begin until late January in 2013. In just over eight months, Jeff built the template for the new tower and began working on replicating the original, as well as gutting the base. While in the townhouse, Jeff took several short amateur videos to record his progress. Just try to give you a better idea of how the template works. There's two rectangles that are identical placed on top of each other. And from the dead center, they are slid. is now. And when the corners all measure the identical measurement, I know that I have a perfect octagon at that point. He also agreed to take our team behind the scenes to show us some of the procedures he's been working on firsthand. Here, Jeff can be seen drilling a bolded block of PVC plastic to one of the three finials that surround the base of the tower. The plastic, along with the finials' new copper tops, will help support and strengthen the existing structure as opposed to creating a whole new one. Jeff's homemade oven uses four light bulbs to heat the plastic under until it's malleable. Then it is fitted and drilled to the base of the finial. And here, Jeff uses a specialized drill called a domino joiner to fit together two wooden beams which will act as support below the finials. The drill alone costs $1,000. Along the way, Jeff has also had numerous newspaper articles written on his progress, many of which applauded his efforts and praised his work on the tower. In an article printed in the Spencer New Leader in early 2013, he expressed his belief that the new tower will look like the capital of central Massachusetts. And it should, given by the glistening, ornate tower replica now sitting in his front yard.
Jeff predicts that the project will last him until the spring of 2014, at which time the bell tower will be returned to its home atop the townhouse. I think um, it's definitely going up in the spring uh, because I, I just can't, uh, after the whole structure is done, after the bell tower is done, um, it, it's going to be picked up and put on its side. It's about as high as a three-decker house. Um, and when it's put on its side, it'll be brought downtown, picked up, and put up there. But I'll have to put the railings on and paint, and I just can't do that in the winter time. It's not, uh, it's just not, uh, I just can't do it. So it'll be ready before spring, uh, but it won't go up until spring. The bell will definitely go up, uh, I would say in November. He anticipates that the event will be huge, the town-wide celebration, and once again, Hundreds of spectators gather to gaze upon yet another great landmark in North Brookfield history. But for now, we are left hoping, anticipating, with fingers crossed, that Jeff's prediction proves to be accurate. Jeff Samuelson is a new hope for North Brookfield. It may just be that newfound hope is just enough to breathe life back into the townhouse of North Brookfield.